northern southern california i don't know what i'm talking right about. yeah you're kind of in the middle there right i hit the karaoke bars in ventura see what those people will have some of them have a sense of humor some of them absolutely not to which i said <laughs> hey hey how you doing hey. <laughs> that word, yeah. holy moly what's up how you doing hey what's going on man how are you good good to see you we're shaking not too i'm sorry i'm just getting my head on straight man <laughs> I wake up uh, sometimes late, you know, because I stay up late, make a lot of music at night, do all the there, do. There you go. Right on. I'm Adam. Nice to meet you. Bo Nader, nice to meet you. Cool. This is a podcast about you and your, your music journey. And oh, we'll I love it. It's a journey. Record. Unlike anybody else, I guarantee you. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, let's hear about it. Where were you born and raised? Well, did there's a bit of a bone of contention today because I don't have a birth certificate. It's one of them things that... I was told it was Louisiana, New Orleans, where my, my pappy used to hang out a lot and uh, visit various brothels and places of ill repute, and I tagged along. I don't quite remember. It could have been in a Greyhound bus going down Route 66. So <laughs> for me, all I know is my earliest memories are mm -hmm. uh, seeing these boogie-woogie piano players playing in brothels around New Orleans and different places down in the South, and my, my pappy was a traveling guy. I actually still to this day don't really know what he did. Is that right? <laughs> I know we could afford prostitutes. Sadly, that you know, I don't, I'm not condoning that in any way, shape, or form. But he was a lonely sure. man for uh, he and my, my mammy uh, split ways. As okay. couples sometimes do, you know. So okay, <laughs> interesting. Okay, so you would spend a lot of did you spend a lot of time down in in New Orleans or what? Well, many times over, but uh, I spent a lot of time on the road. So uh, what happened was I'd be in Alabama, I'd be in Tennessee, I'd be in Kentucky, I'd be in North Florida, I'd be in Georgia. I'd be in different places uh, going around and seeing different people, hearing different people and seeing when you get to enough different places, even in the South, where it seems like everybody's Southern, whatever. Uh, North Florida is more Southern than South Georgia, but I digress. You get mm -hmm. around enough of these places, you see the similarities in people. Okay. Yeah, people are moms and dads, love their family, love their kids. Some people uh, teach love. Some people teach hate. It's just that's what's going on. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I teach and preach love all, all the way. I love that. Rad. Well, what about music? You said you were around uh, piano players, the brothels? That's Aside from that, word else? <laughs> so my, my first uh, recollection, besides listening to eight-track tapes in my, my daddy's Camaro, were uh, being around in all these places where people were actually playing the piano. And if you know anything about the piano, it's a percussion instrument. It's a, a mechanical uh, thing. It's actually quite amazing that somebody uh, invented this. Incredible. Right. The whole thing that works where you push. So when you have this and you see people really doing it and playing it, it becomes a part of you. You kind of plug into it and it brings all this music out. I couldn't believe it. So I was like, I'd stare at the piano when nobody was playing it. And I just say, man, think of all the music that's sitting in there. And if I just learned to tickle it, I could bring it out. Uh, a similar technique I applied to uh, pleasuring the women in my life. <laughs> so and what, what age was that? What age were well, you, not the uh, women were you tickling, but uh, the, what age were you uh, <laughs> tickling piano keys? Well, as as soon as I could reach the keys. I mean, I was a little kid and uh, I started to ask questions. Hey, mm -hmm. show me how you did that. You know, and uh, again, uh, the way I found my, myself into lovemaking. But uh, I digress. Well, I'd be watching somebody play and they'd be on the break. And I'd be like, hey, that little thing you did with your left hand, can you show me how to do that? And they'd, I'd know what it did, even if my hand couldn't reach it. Mm -hmm. And then I'd do it. Eventually, as uh, my appendages grew, again, homage to my love making. Sure. Okay. So, uh, well, I, being on the road so much, I mean, it sounds like you're you're traveling around with your dad and you're hitting up some some brothels. It and, was classy, uh, but uh, let me tell you, I wouldn't trade it for anything else. That itinerant lifestyle where you learn uh, that every day when you open the car door and you get out in a different town, uh huh, you're new to everybody. Sure. So you can technically. You pull into be. one town, be the coolest cat ever. Pull into the next town, be a strong, silent type. Pull into the next town, you could be anybody. So you kind of learn this like thing about yourself as you yeah. glue from a tethered place. And or you get out of the car, and then if you just like shit the bed, and like no one thinks you're cool or whatever, then you're like, well, at least tomorrow I got another chance. Tfo, yeah. <laughs> next day, next time, come on. But if it, Dad's like, hey, we're staying for two weeks, I was like, oh man, I already pulled my asshole card. Oh man. Yeah. Uh oh. And, and then you're, you're yeah, then you're done for. Then what are you doing? You're just looking for brothels with pianos. Yeah, yeah. 
and eventually uh, somebody to ride on your mustache. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, you know, besides brothels, there's other places with pianos. Not so much anymore. But, I, but I, where else were you hanging out? It sounds like that was a big spot, though. Well, think about it. You know, you got places like poo halls and uh, jukebox joints and whatnot. Sure. I into, I'm never into drinking. I'm a cannabis user, so I, I don't. Okay. I don't drive. I had, a beer. That. I had some wine. I did a wine tasting up in the uh, Napa Valley. It was lovely, but after a little sip or two, it was like. What am I doing here? Where's the cannabis tasting? What what do I pair with my cannabis? I don't need to drink more wine. Sure. Are you in California now? I'm just curious. I am. All of me. All of you. What part? I'm from California originally. Well, now I'm in Tennessee. I'm, like we swap places. Yeah, I'm out in I'm out in the mountains because uh, the city life ain't for me. I like sure. the idea of they being able to drive down into uh, Los Angeles or mm -hmm. drive over into Santa Barbara or something. And, but Really, unless I'm going to a show or some live comedy or taking over a karaoke bar, which you may have seen me do. Yeah. Uh, I like to keep to myself. I sit in my studio, uh, make music uh, as much as I can. And it's really uh, about inspiration. Sweet. Uh, what do you like? I guess I don't want to give out your uh, exact location, but are you, like around what? Like Bear? Uh, oh, no, that's Arrowhead. on the eastern side. I'm on the western side towards uh, oh. The Ventura, Ventucky, as they call it. Sometimes. Got you. Okay. I know exactly. Interesting. Right. Ventura's got this kind of like Ventucky feel to it, where you're like, or you think you guys think you're Northern California, but really when it comes down to it, you're Northern Southern California. I don't know what I'm talking right, about. Right. Yeah. You're kind of in the middle there, right? I hit the karaoke bars in Ventura, see what those people have. Some of them have a sense of humor, some of them absolutely not, to which I say, <laughs> hey, hey, how you doing? Hey. <laughs> I guess what it depends on what part of the yeah, Ventura you're in. Because you does. can get the it snooty. Really I mean, you could get the water, you know, the well, I go, I the like beach, the the beach I, peeps. Are you, are you a wave rider by any chance? Uh, not so much. I mean, when I, I, I'm from San Diego, so I watched right. a lot of people ride waves. I skateboarded, though. I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I wasn't really down with that cold water in the Pacific Ocean. Well, it's usually a lot warmer down there. Uh, being on the county, it's a whale's vagina. Hey, thank you very much. Sure. But uh, one of the things that uh, I know about the waves is they – they are a teacher. They teach you things. They, mm -hmm. they teach you lessons about yourself. They show you who's boss, but they also teach you to get in the moment in the flow. The past is shredded behind you. The future's uncertain, but possibly some pleasures ahead are there. Smackdown. I mm -hmm. love it. Keeps me fresh, keeps me whole. Every time I punch through a set, I'm like, yeah. So I'm all about uh, being out on the bodyboard, which is why in the wintertime, especially that Ventura coastline, Nice and tidy, tell you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Good but stuff. it's freezing. I don't tell, what do you I'm got? Still you got secret to... spots, but I'm telling you, somewhere up there is the victory. Yeah. I'm sure you got a, what, you got a full suit on when you're getting in there? You got the head three, thing? Or three, I put on some booties, put on a, a hood, keep my head warm. Oh, yeah. Got you know? to, man. It's freezing in there. Well, I'd be wearing, is, I'd be wearing that, that like in August. I do. <laughs> I mean, I'll wear it year round. I, <laughs> what can I say? I like to be comfortable, but I, I'll tell you. The thrill of dropping into a big, tasty bear. Oh, oh yeah. Fine. Scooping your rail, maybe spinning 360 on the way out, or hit the lip, do a little inverter ARS. Man, that's the kind of stuff that makes all the cold just go away. Sure. I'm inside just thinking about it. Oh, yeah. That's fun, man. Yeah. I, I did a little bodyboarding. Not, not a whole lot, but uh, like I said. So when I you're ready, we can go out. I'll come down and take you to a secret spot down there you may not even know about. Because uh -huh. Is it called it. Black's Beach? Oh, man, that's where I do my nude sunbathing. <laughs> uh, love that's it. why I have no Speedo lines. I have a perfect tan on my ding dong. <laughs> uh, that's there? cool. Well, I, I, I don't know. When you said mountains and, 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 uh, and cannabis, I was thinking maybe you're up in the Humboldt or something. Oh, I've traveled that way, the Emerald Triangle, man. Mm -hmm. Boy, I, hey, look, you can go to Amsterdam and Jamaica and different places. California is where it's at. That's why when I came out, going back to the music, uh, and during the pandemic, I was on lockdown in my, my cabin, and, and I had my little studio set up, and my piano, and my guitar, my bass, and I just started cranking the songs out with a big jar of cannabis and a little sack of mushrooms. Everything just opened up in me, and I wrote uh, a lot of music, and I'm putting all this music out right now. Uh, my first, second, third record, Nearly There, uh, mm -hmm. next record coming up. And the one after that, there's going to be nine in a row. Now, oh, wow. One every month. And I know you're saying, hey, man, come on. Hey, you, how can you continue the quality? I guarantee you, you're going to listen to these albums. You're going to listen to these songs. You're going to hear an artist expanding his mind. And 
also uh, tickling your loins and your booty with some funk because I lay down the bass, <laughs> uh, the funk bass in the country music, and I, I call it funk tree. That's yeah. My I did and I see write that. my songs and I play the instruments and I produce the music myself. I write the lyrics, everything solo. So what I put out there is I'm not putting myself on anybody else's level. Sure. Who else would do that? Who else could do that? I look at people like Prince as an inspiration. I look at mm -hmm. people like Frank Zappa as an inspiration. However, I'm Bonaire. I'm in my own wing of the building. These right. guys didn't have uh, everything that I got, and I've got what they got. That's fine. I don't need to wear those tight pants with the big buttons, Prince. <laughs> I may need to dance with somebody named Apollonia. Vagina. There you go. Hey. So, um, okay, so p piano, were you writing songs as a kid or was this like a new venture for you? In a way, I've always been writing songs, but little songs to myself, right? Okay. Rather than angle for something I like, or maybe I write a song, I play it on the guitar and some honky tonk, but nobody cared. Nobody cared mm -hmm. back then. I was kind of incognito underground. Nobody cared. That's when you do your best work, when nobody cared, when mm -hmm. nobody's listening, when nobody gives a rat's tushy about who you are and what you're doing so you're just doing sure. it for yourself you're doing something to create something that lasts beyond yourself and mm -hmm. i have created this body of work so i had to release it in style uh at the end of it all there may be a semi-nude calendar ladies hold on tight Woo <laughs> i don't know some of you gentlemen too everybody's come on into the tent you're all welcome all right well maybe you can put out instead of nine records put out 12 and then each album cover will be oh, you're a size of, you know. queen ain't you you're a size Ooh. queen he wants they, i give him nine he wants 12 oh i want 12 oh, i just want 12 pictures of you on your sexy oh, 12, calendar well there's gonna be 12 pictures nine hours. <laughs> hey, hey, by that time i may do three more records worth of stuff because That's i'm what I mean. an inspired man there you go 20 it's not just what, because the women send me their calendar? underpants in the mail i don't even know how they find me the underpants <laughs> <laughs> oh man okay so when you when did you move to california how long have you been living there there well, i should say i would say uh it's been a couple of years it might be it might be uh lucky number seven I think. okay but i was i was again i was on my ramble i was traveling around i was up north i was here and there I went to calistoga put mud on my ding dong did the thing you do naked white suit floating in the springs i got it all done okay and then i came down here it was just warm enough for me to keep my action flowing year round especially in the ocean I, you ever surf up there man you go on your new wave on that shit's 40 degrees and there's great white sharks coming in cruising for you good oh. luck oh yeah man i spent some, i lived, I lived in the, the steamer lane <laughs> i lived in the barrier for uh about five years and yeah i, I think i went in the well, water you know, once so it's ocean <laughs> beach, that, I, I have mad respect for people to go out paddle out and surf ocean beach you guys are mofos to the end Oh yeah, I'm down here. I do my own thing down here. I get plenty of big waves, but that stuff's crazy. Oh, oh yeah, and it's literally freezing. Like, I like that. I like that people do that. They go crazy, so I can appreciate it and have my vicarious thrill. That's why I live the life that I live, so all my fans can have a vicarious thrill through my music and my life, and soon to be live performances. Because here's the thing: most people don't understand. You're gonna put a band together to mm -hmm. create music. You have to put people in those slots to go and do it justice. I'm literally replacing myself. Yeah. How the hell do I do that? I mean, hey, I'm not going that I'm the most special person in the world, but I got a certain thing and I can't uh, spread it around. So who am I going to get that's going to stand that tall next to me? It's been a, a hard job to find. I'll take a, a group of females if they could all outplay each other. I just want the best, uh, baddest ass jammers in the world. Anybody listen to this and wants to throw down some functry, uh, you can reach out to a bonaire because somebody's got to come in and grab the crown and be fit to wear. So cr currently you're just recording records and putting them out. And not, are you playing it's by crazy. yourself? Like solo? So, here's what yeah, happened. Tell, tell me here's the story. Happened. Let's hear the story. I recorded all this music, right? Sure. And I during the pandemic. It, uh, during the pandemic. All last okay. year. Right? All got up it. into uh, really the, the new year. And I'm recording all these songs and uh, for my own pleasure, driving around, hanging out, ooh, having fun. Mm -hmm. And I'm realizing that group after group of these coming out, and I'm coming up with these names for my record. I mean, Truth or Nair was pretty easy. And then Bodacious was, <laughs> I like that. And then uh, Nairly Dayer, I got coming up Bonanza, uh, Mr. Bodangles. I got them all coming. <laughs> eight, and nine, eight and nine are going to uh, really take you by the wee wee. But uh, for now, I'm going to only give everybody what's coming uh, the next couple. But 
uh, all these I recorded. And then now I'm going back and I'm, I'm fine tuning. I'm listening through, I'm adjusting the mixes so that the bass is right there to grab you by the, the coochie and uh, everything else. The lyrics are nice and out front so you could hear uh, some of my filth and degradation and intellectual smut that I like to unfurl from my educated tongue. All right. So yeah, you where do you start? I mean, do you are they all kind of like, you know, truth or nair? Uh, bodacious like are these like collections of songs that you're like okay i know these are gonna go together as an album or did you just have a bunch of songs that came out and you yeah tell me about that it's interesting putting together the flow for a record when you put together right. your track, what's gonna come first so uh i'm opening these records with a, a big funky tune because it's got to come in with the slam right uh mm -hmm. massage garage on nearly there is uh, a prime example uh but as these albums unfold each song gonna stand up for itself. I mean, you could put on a a, a mix of all my records together and they, they would just flow just fine, right? Some might be a little uh, uh, softer and more romantic than the others, but there's gonna be the bass coming in and everything's gonna feel real good. Uh, my goal is to be known as a songwriter, is mm -hmm. to be known as a performer once I can get my band together and get out there, is to be known as somebody that did something that nobody else there's a tent. Some talented people out there farming out their songwriting to people, farming out their recording to people. All right. All mm -hmm. right. Peace out. It's good to hire people. Good to hire session musicians. Good for songwriters to have songs bring them in that mailbox money. I like that. I don't need that. But maybe I'll write a song with Taylor Swift. Maybe I will write a song with Miranda Lambert. Maybe Miranda Lambert will leave her man and drive me like a Lamborghini. I have no idea. That Taylor Swift might write a whole album about our failed romance before it's even started. I don't know. Yeah, she got it. She just announced a new record. It might be about you. We never know. Well, I am a midnight man, so <laughs> <laughs> you know. uh, that's a, okay. So, um, are you actively looking for for members of the band, or well, like or what I'm going? I'm going. I'm going to do this right. I'm going to find the right people. And if that takes mm -hmm. me a little time, it's okay. I got albums coming out. Some of my biggest songs are on album. I, man, what's coming in November and December? What's going to hit you in January? Going to, I'm telling you. I'm, I'm leading up. So people are going to say, how can he top this? That's the thing. I set my own bar so damn high that I could not help but continue to reach for my bar. Also an allusion to my masturbatory habits. But I digress. Uh, <laughs> It's almost like a mild form of Tourette's. I can't help going with the low-hanging sexual fruit. Ooh. There you go. So uh, I want to I want to know the other names of the records because those oh, are good. Yeah. I like Truth or Nair, yeah. All and right. I want to well, pitch a couple to you. I'm going to pitch uh, one to you when you're done. You're going to pitch one to me? All right. Yeah. Well, I, can't, I can only give you what's coming up. I can't give you. So, okay. Give, uh, me, give me what's coming up. So Bonanza is. Oh, yeah. Bonanza. Uh, of course. Bojangles. Was that one? Mr. Bodangles. Uh, Bo Dangles. Okay. Mr. And there's a picture on the cover that huh, I'm telling you right now uh, is it, pretty saucy. Uh, I don't know uh, who else is listening out there. And uh, number six, which is going to come out in uh, December, is Bonafide. Oh, yes, I am. Okay. I like those. I'm a little like bonafide them. right now. But hey, yeah. And that, that one has a, a song that uh, it may be uh, titled in uh, incendiary emotion, but it's about one of my favorite animals. It's called Big Fat Pussy. I think you okay. might. Know. Very cool. Dig it. Um, and there's a song called Smothered in Mothers because they love me. <laughs> Silver Tongue Fox. What can I say? Grandma's. Yeah. I haven't written it. Actually, I did write a song about Grandma's. Which album is that on? Hold on a second. Uh, Grandma, Grandma's is coming on. Uh, what album is that on? Is that on number seven? Number seven. I can't even tell you the title of that because once it's out, people are going to be like, oh, no, he did. I'm going to be like, oh, Bo, he did. Uh, oh, Bo, <laughs> like, he did. That's a good song about Grandma. Right there. Uh, there you go. Oh, Bo, he you're did. Not, you're going to think there's going to be a song about me having all sorts of sexual relations with grandmas. And while I could write a song like that or perhaps a, a photo journal book, uh, <laughs> the bottom line is I wrote a tender song about that grandmas aren't here forever we got to cherish them while they're here and every once in a while i'm gonna surprise you by touching your heartstrings give them a little pluck like the arrow like cupid's arrow you're gonna feel it now and then and then right back to the big uh thick uh, dick jokes there you go well what about okay here's my here's my pitch for you the less you wear the more you nair there's you can one keep that one you can keep that one. <laughs> the less you wear, the more you nair. Man, it's a <laughs> motto I should put above my bedpost. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. 
There you go. Um, yeah. What was I going to say? Uh, that's cool. So, so you have a, you said every month you're releasing an album for nine that's months right. straight? Yeah. It, September, I'm uh, doing, uh, I did the, the ninth, I pushed it past Labor Day weekend, but basically the first Friday of every month, you're going to get a nice little surprise drop. And at first my, my people were like, Hey man, you were like, people work, work a record for a year. You know that I'm like, I know. Yeah. That. Yeah. And he said, they're going, it's too much for people. I'm like, listen, if you need to go, if you go get, get into somebody who's gone, Jimi Hendrix, Bob Marley, their catalogs there. You can dip in as you please. Here are the songs that everybody likes. Here are the greatest hits, whatever it is. By this time next year, you're going to have my entire catalog out there in NSA. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's a good time to start getting on the train because you're going to have a month to live with the music and then something's going to drop. And you're going to say like, all right, let's see what's on this one. I guarantee uh, I bust guts and nuts. I like it. That's cool. That's great. I mean, it's definitely a different approach and you're doing something no one else is doing. I am. And I'm penetrating parts of people that look, modern country music turns me off. It's very narrow. The subject matter's narrow, the sounds are narrow, the rhythms are narrow, everything. So even line dancing, people move around, but there is no movement to the gluteus maximus of people listening to country music. The mm -hmm. last time people got funky to country was exile, kiss you all over in the late 70s. So I need to bring back something that's people who listen to country is going to be hearing my song come on. All of a sudden, their body's going to start moving. They'll be like, what? what's happening? Like in Beetlejuice when they all start, uh, you know, singing the yeah. Banana De Deo song. You know what I'm sure. talking about, right? Yeah, yeah. So uh, this is my plan. I'm going to come in under country and comedy, too. You might have heard some of my answer machine messages I put up on online because I yeah. Pretty funny, and people need people need to laugh nowadays. Some serious people out there, right? Everybody needs to lighten it up a little bit. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. Is this going to be like more? Because obviously, the 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 songs have a very com comedic appeal to them. Uh, is that what it? Is that what you envision? Like more of a comedy slash? Now, you know, look, you ever show? seen Leslie? You ever see Police Police Academy? Uh, police Squad? Uh, Leslie Nielsen movies? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. Please, yeah, 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 Naked Gun. So when you watch his early movies where he was not a comedian, he's uh -huh. straight, you're waiting for a punchline the whole time. It never comes. You're like, holy shit, this guy's holding on, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm coming out with the humor. Look, I got a sense of humor. I got to let it out. And, I, and I, I like to be clever. I don't need to use all the low-hanging fruit the dirty words. I could use those all day long. And I have a couple in there, sprinkle them in there. Hey, I'm an adult. This is adult music. If a child is listening, you might want to put that off a little ways. But all I want people to hear, you're going to hear great song, right? And you're going to hear catchy melodies. You might be singing about a sweet little beaver or something like that, but it's going to be a good hook and it's going to catch you. You're going to realize what I'm doing. You're going to realize I'm playing all that music. And you're going to realize too that uh, if you see my other videos, there's, there's something more than just the music here. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I could put myself on the comedy, but I also like to comment on things in the world. My uh, recent video I had up about the Pledge of Allegiance and uh, you know, pardon me for being originalist, but I went back to the 1800s version that was written, not the uh, version where they added under God, the 50s mm -hmm. Cold War, to appease the anti-communist. I get all why it's there. People are like, if you're not saying under God, you're not saying the pledge. But being originalist to the Constitution would be like, you can't have it both ways. I hate hypocrisy. That's one of the things I'm up against in the world is hypocrisy. Wherever it comes from, you might have seen my dating tips for incels. I won't help people out. You don't sit there feeling sorry for yourself because the girl's not going to jump on your loins and start mashing them up like potatoes. You want to be able to have something to offer so a woman knows she's going to feel safe in your arms, safe with you between her legs, which is where you need to be going to get your mustache rid. Am I right? I'm right. Prove me Very right. cool. Very cool. I can't, uh, I'm, I'm anticipating these next few albums, man. I, and I can't wait to, to, to not only listen to them, but, but, Check out the titles. Now, now like I'm going to tell you something. You can tell. You can tell my whole year by what I was singing about. You can tell the point where I was binge watching Three's Company. I'm a big Jack Tripper fan. Mm -hmm. uh, and, oh, Norman Fell and Don Knott. We, we get into a whole Three's Company talk and uh, why Cindy should be just removed. Uh, anyhow, you can tell when I was reading The Lord of the Rings. That was at the same time I was binging it. So there's songs uh, on Nearly There that specifically reference both Three's Company and The Lord of the Rings together in a match made in heaven, my heaven, which also includes me on the arm of Miss Emma Bunton from the Spice Girls. Emma, if you're out there, my heart beats for you, too, shall become one. <laughs> love it. I love it. Well, I, this has been great. I have one more question for you, Bo, before I let Only you go. Only one? 
Only nice. one more, man. This flew Do by. It. Show it. All uh, right. Uh, any advice for aspiring artists? Yeah, I got I got advice for every aspiring artist out there. Are you ready? I'm gonna lay it to you straight and thick. Be true to your dreams. Be original. Don't listen to people that tell you you can't, you won't, you'll never. Don't listen to people that try to diminish what you're doing, that don't get what you're doing. Sometimes people that profess to love you and do love you, love the version of you that they see in their eyes. And that version may be challenged by the version of you that you are becoming, much like David Bowie morphed into Ziggy Stardust, right? So if you are going to be the ultimate butterfly that you need to be, then you have to be unfettered in how your wings can flap and fly. You don't need somebody coming up and yanking your wings off like a mean old kid with a fly. You need to soar. So you need to look for the people that's gonna be wind beneath your wings. You need to look for the people that are gonna shoot straight at you and tell you the truth and tell you, you know what, that does suck, but you're getting better. I like that, it's getting better. And maybe get to a point where you trust your own good. But for now, what you gotta do is create healthy boundaries. So you can create the art that you need to create. Now, that's not saying that sometimes artists aren't their uh, worst enemies and not being able to edit themselves or getting demoitis and holding on to an idea. You have to be able to kill your darlings. You have to be able to reimagine what you're doing and next level it up. Everybody's got a next level. It's like a superhero outfit hanging in the closet. Most people don't acknowledge it or dare to put it on. I put mine on. I made my music, I made my video, I put my albums out, and I'm about to take over the world, not just of country music, but the entire globe of human consciousness. And if that ain't inspiration to you, get up off your butt and start kicking some ass. Bonaire. Bring me the bad word.